Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Ward, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cloudflare. I'm here today to talk about improving application performance and security without using Cloudflare authoritative DNS. This is accomplished by creating a partial CNAME DNS setup in Cloudflare, which this video will walk you through. Before we get started, there are a few terms you need to know in advance of this walkthrough. The first is authoritative DNS. Authoritative DNS should be considered the source of truth for name resolution within a given domain, and authoritative DNS servers are responsible for hosting those records. DNS resolvers, on the other hand, are responsible for recursively querying as many name servers as is necessary to resolve a DNS name to an IP address. Results are usually cached within DNS resolvers based on the time to live or TTL of the DNS record they resolve. However, when results are not in cache, DNS resolvers typically end up querying authoritative name servers. Lastly, CNAME record, short for canonical name, is a type of DNS record that maps one domain name to another, the canonical name. CNAME responses require additional queries to resolve to an IP address, which is typically handled by the DNS resolver. You can see a couple of examples of CNAME records here at the bottom of the slide, where www.example.com might point to example.com. CNAME record domain names and mappings don't need to exist in the same domain or even the same top-level domain or TLD. In the last example, you can see a CNAME record that maps a domain name in example.com to a domain name in example.net. This slide walks through the basic tree structure of DNS and how the different levels of DNS work together to resolve DNS queries. First, an end user on the internet makes a DNS request to resolve a website address into an IP address it can actually connect to. In this case, the end user wants to reach www.example.com. End user DNS queries are typically sent to recursive resolvers. In this example, we're using Cloudflare's 1.1.1 resolver. Other examples of recursive resolvers include Google's 8.8.8.8 or Quad 9's 9.9.9.9. For this example, we'll assume the DNS resolver has no cache to resolve this query, so it will need to step through all the types of DNS name servers. In reality, DNS resolvers almost always have cached results and don't have to query all the levels of the DNS structure to resolve a single query. Once the DNS resolver receives a DNS query, it essentially needs to read the address backwards, starting with the top-level domain, or TLD. In this case, COM is the TLD. To find out which name servers are authoritative for the COM TLD, the DNS resolver will use a root name server. It's important to know that there are only 13 root name servers on the entire internet. The root name server returns a set of NS records or name server records for the com domain, and then the resolver sends a query to one of those servers for example.com. The response to this query is also a set of NS records for the example.com domain, which are authoritative name servers for that domain. In the final step of resolution, the resolver sends a query for www.example.com to the authoritative name server for the domain, which returns in our example an A record with an IP address to connect to. So what is a partial CNAME DNS setup? Typically, Cloudflare leverages our authoritative DNS to direct queries to Cloudflare's Layer 7 reverse proxy rather than directly to the server or origin. However, in a case where Cloudflare isn't the authoritative DNS server, Cloudflare can't set the IP address of a DNS record to point to Cloudflare's Layer 7 reverse proxy. A partial CNAME setup allows an organization to configure a zone within Cloudflare but use a third party for authoritative DNS. The third party authoritative DNS uses CNAME records to ultimately send traffic to Cloudflare's Layer 7 reverse proxy. You may be wondering when is a partial CNAME setup needed? There are really only two factors. One, a customer has a desire to take advantage of Cloudflare's Layer 7 stack offering such services as DDoS protection, bot management, web application firewall, caching, load balancing, or any of our Layer 7 services. The other key factor is that the organization either can't implement Cloudflare authoritative DNS or doesn't want to. This can be due to such reasons as existing infrastructure or complex integrations already being in place, existing contracts, potentially siloed technology teams, or even simply just having no desire to change their DNS provider. Now that we understand how a partial CNAME setup works, let's discuss the configuration needed. All these steps are covered in the demonstration later in this video, but to summarize, first, we need to convert the Cloudflare zone to a partial CNAME zone. This is done with a couple clicks on the dashboard. 
As part of that process, a TXT record will need to be added to the domain in the authoritative name server for Cloudflare to be able to verify ownership of the domain and begin handling traffic for that domain. On the authoritative DNS server, a CNAME record will be created that essentially points to Cloudflare for final DNS resolution. Using our previous example on the authoritative name server, a CNAME record for www.example.com would be created with an alias of www.example.com.cdn.cloudflare.net. The Cloudflare cdn.cloudflare.net zone has special processing that truncates cdn.cloudflare.net from the query and only resolves the remaining part of the domain name. This means a query for www.example.com would result in a response of www.example.com.cdn.cloudflare.net. The resolver would then perform a request for www.example.com.cdn.cloudflare.net, which would get truncated to www.example.com within Cloudflare and then match the zone for example.com that Cloudflare is hosting. This would ultimately result in www.example.com being served by Cloudflare's Layer 7 reverse proxy. Finally, let's compare the difference from a Cloudflare perspective between a typical Cloudflare authoritative DNS setup and a partial CNAME setup. The first example shows Cloudflare acting as the authoritative name server. DNS queries may pass through other resolvers, however, the source of the A record ultimately comes from Cloudflare's authoritative DNS. All DNS and HTTP requests are handled directly by Cloudflare, and all of Cloudflare's Layer 7 services are available. The second example shows a partial CNAME setup. You can see there is an extra DNS resolution that has to occur. First, the query for www.example.com must be resolved, which returns a CNAME result of www.example.com.cdn.cloudflare.net. This CNAME record must now be resolved to an IP address. Again, most likely Resolver will perform this query for the user, but ultimately Cloudflare DNS must provide the response for the second request. At a high level, the main difference between the two configurations is that the partial CNAME setup involves an extra DNS query. However, given Cloudflare's DNS resolution is the fastest on the planet, this only adds a few milliseconds of latency, and ultimately, the partial CNAME setup also allows all of Cloudflare's Layer 7 services to be available. All right, let's get on to the demonstration. So I've brought up a web browser here, and I'm going to show you what we're trying to enable as part of this demonstration. You can see on this page, I've browsed to a public IP address directly. So I'm talking directly to the origin here. We're not talking through any proxy services, including Cloudflare. The goal of this demonstration is to get this website hosted through www.orangeoutside.com, which is a domain I've purchased just for this demonstration. You can see right now that this domain doesn't work. We cannot browse to it, and that's because we haven't set up the proper DNS records. Orangeoutside.com is not using Cloudflare as its authoritative DNS server. In fact, it's using AWS Route 53. So what we have to do as part of this demonstration is get this origin proxied through Cloudflare while not using Cloudflare's authoritative DNS service. Before we get into the configuration, I just wanted to briefly show you that Cloudflare is not the authoritative DNS service for orangeoutside.com. I'm going to do that by using the dig command on a Linux box. You can see here that we're using 1.1.1.1 as the resolver for this request and we're looking for name server records for orangeoutside.com. Name server records indicate the authoritative DNS servers for a domain. You can see that we get four responses, all of which point to AWS DNS services. So this means that Cloudflare is not authoritative DNS for this domain, AWS is. So let's go ahead and get into the configuration of a partial CNAME DNS setup. Here in the Cloudflare dashboard, you can see that I've added orangeoutside.com. However, you can also see that the Cloudflare dashboard is reporting it as not active yet. And that's what we want, since Cloudflare won't be the authoritative DNS service for orangeoutside.com. You can also see that I haven't entered any DNS records yet. What I am going to do, however, just to further the point that Cloudflare is not the authoritative DNS service for this domain, is I am going to add a record for www and have it point to the public IP address that I showed you previously in the web browser. And I'll go ahead and hit save. 
Now, if I go back to my SSH session and use the dig command again, but this time trying to resolve www.orangeoutside.com for that record I just created, you'll see here that no record exists for www.orangeoutside.com. And that's because the resolver is not using Cloudflare as the authoritative DNS service for orangeoutside.com. If we come back to the dashboard, we can start the partial CNAME conversion. If we come here to the overview page and scroll down, you'll see that there's an option down here to convert to a CNAME DNS setup, and we're going to click that. Uh, then we're simply going to click convert. When that's done, we're going to get a verification TXT record that we have to add to the authoritative DNS service for the orange outside domain. Here on the AWS Route 53 dashboard, we're going to go to create new record. I'm going to add the content first since I have that in my clipboard. And then we're going to add the Cloudflare verify record name. And this is again, not an A record. It asked us to create a TXT record. So we have Cloudflare verify a TXT record with the value that was given to us in the Cloudflare dashboard. And so we'll go ahead and create that record. Back in the Cloudflare dashboard, we can go ahead and click continue. And you'll see that now it's converted and it's offering us to convert back to primary if we want to at some point in the future. You can see that our DNS records have transferred over, but there's also a message here that we need to take note of. And that is that this domain is in a pending state while it verifies ownership. What this means is that Cloudflare will not proxy traffic for this domain until ownership is verified. This is true for all zone types hosted in Cloudflare. What we can do to speed this along is simply go to the overview page and we can say reactivate. And this will have Cloudflare check again for that TXT record, which most likely just did not propagate through the AWS DNS infrastructure fast enough. Once the verification is complete, you'll see a page like this on your overview screen, which says great news, Cloudflare is now protecting your site. This means not only did we do the conversion to a partial CNAME DNS setup, but also Cloudflare has verified the TXT record in AWS Route 53, which means the zone is now active in Cloudflare and Cloudflare can now proxy traffic for the domain. So if we go back over to the DNS records, our www record is still there. However, now we need to tell AWS how to reach this specific www record. The other thing I'd like to show you on this page is if we scroll down here, the partial zone suffix is now specified as part of the partial CNAME setup. So what we need to do on AWS, what it's telling us to do here, is that we need to go create a record on the AWS Route 53 zone that points to www, but its CNAME record is going to point to www.orangeoutside.com.cdn.cloudflare.net. So I'll copy this, and then let's head over to the AWS uh, dashboard. Now that we're back in the AWS dashboard, we can go ahead and create another record. Again, we want to create a, a record for www, since that's the domain we're trying to route to. The record type is going to be a CNAME record. And what we need to create a record for is www.orangeoutside.com. Dot, and then I'm just going to paste in what I copied from the Cloudflare dashboard. And so just to explain what's happening here, when a client resolves www.orangeoutside.com, AWS Route 53 is going to send back a CNAME response with this as the response. This is going to be resolved by the client again. So the client will send a DNS request out to www.orangeoutside.com.cdn.cloudflare.net. Cloudflare.net is served by Cloudflare Authoritative DNS Services. CDN.cloudflare.net has some special processing in it that will remove the CDN.cloudflare.net portion of this DNS request and then resolve this as a DNS request. So since orangeoutside.com is a domain configured inside of Cloudflare and www is a host configured within that domain, within that zone, this is going to resolve to the Cloudflare IP address and then allow the client to send a request directly to Cloudflare. So let's go ahead and save this record. 
and let's go test it out. So we're back here in the browser, and you remember that this direct to origin works. But remember that www.orangeoutside did not work. So let's go ahead and try it again. So now we can see this is working. So what did we do? First, in Cloudflare, we converted the zone to a partial CNAME setup. This required us to add a TXT record to verify with Cloudflare that we did in fact own authoritative DNS for the domain so that Cloudflare would process traffic for that domain. Once we did that, all we had to do was add a CNAME record to our authoritative DNS that pointed to Cloudflare so that when a client resolved www.orangeoutside.com, traffic ultimately ended up with Cloudflare to proxy the traffic to the origin. Thanks for watching this demonstration of a partial CNAME DNS setup.